In this tutorial, I'm going to show you what the Elementor Pro Form widget looks like, how it works, all its settings, and some demos of what you can do with it, and we're getting started right now. Hey, what is going on? My name is Bjorn. If you like WordPress tips and tricks and always getting better at it, make sure you click subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And this video is part of the Elementor Pro playlist in this channel link in the description down below or part of the comments down below. Make sure you check out the whole playlist to see all the widgets in action. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you get on the Elementor Pro Ultimate Course waitlist, which I'm building right now. I'm still in the process of building it. It's not completed yet. Getting on the waitlist is no obligation. But if you do like Elementor and you want to know how to do everything with it, get on that waitlist. Link in the description down below. And with that out of the way, let's hit in the screen capture. I'll see you there. Go back to this grid icon choose form drag and drop it in look at that pretty beautiful form right out of the box the yellow button hmm, not so beautiful but it's fine we'll work with it so first things first let's redesign this a little bit it looks pretty good as it is but i'm going to add some padding on the top so it's not squished right to the very top i'm going to add margin instead actually no i'm not going to add margin to the bottom of the form i like the I like to add margin to the bottom of things instead of the top of things. Even though I just add to the top right there. When I can, I always put it to the bottom. So then I always know if there's margin, I know where it is. It's on the bottom of the element above. This makes more sense for me that way. Uh, for the form, we can give it a form name. Let's give this the name of contact form. Under the name option, if you click on that, we have all the settings for the name field. We can change its type, but name's a pretty good first type in there. We can change the label or take it away completely. Placeholder, we can change to please enter your name. Make it required, yes or no. If you have a label, I think it has an indicator. No, there's no indicator, that's required. But it'll validate as not going through and it should highlight as red when submitted. Column width. You can make that 50%. And watch this. I make the email 50%. You know, let's do let's do it different. Please enter your first name. Then I'm going to add another item. I'm going to drag and drop it up. And I'm going to close that. I'm going to duplicate this item. Let's do that. Please enter your last name. And now you see that they're side by side because I set them to 50% column width. If I set this back to 100, the last name will go back down to the bottom at 50 side by side. You want it, you want to have three in a row, you can have it set to 30% or 33% in this case. And then let's duplicate this. Let's call it please enter your middle name. Now we have first name, middle name, last name. Three different fields, all in a row. Super simple, you got fields side by side. And I wanna change this item number. I should be able to change that text. Apparently not. So we just have item number one here. Under advanced, we can set a custom ID if we want to. The field name, the short code, we cannot change. And that's based on what you create. So for example, we just duplicated that number two and the custom ID is random string of characters and the short code has that we can't change the short code but we can't change well we can change the ID so just keep that in mind same for item number three item number four is just an email I'm gonna keep it as the email I'm gonna take away the placeholder I'm gonna say please enter your best email it's required for message I'm going to say, please write your message here. And remove the label. Make that required as well. And up above, I'm going to add a headline so everybody knows what this thing is that we're working on here. Because now that we removed labels, it's a little hard to see. So uh, drop us a line. So I'm going to call it, center it. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it darkish gray. There we go. Let's go back into the form. We can change the input size. 
between extra small and extra large, depending on what your clientele is, I would think. You can show or hide labels, so I deleted them up here. You can also show and hide them. You can add a required mark. So if we add a label back in, this one is middle name, we see that it has the red asterisk for required. If we take that off, it'll take that asterisk away. Choose this, it'll hide the label. That's it for those settings. The submit button, we can change to send or submit or whatever text we want here. Make the button size any size that we want. We can also change the width of the button. I'm gonna keep a full width down below, center it, shrinks the size, and the justify makes a full width. We can select an icon. So I'm gonna choose maybe a male icon, envelope. There we go, nice envelope icon. Change the spacing a bit. I also wanna change the button color in a minute, but it looks like a pretty good button right there. Actions after submit. So here we have actions we can perform. The most important one is the email action because after an email is sent, you actually want to get the email. So you need to have the email action. We can also add this list we have here. Email to is an email that's sent to the person who submitted the form. So before I add that, we have email as an action here. We have an email settings area here. When I add email to, we now have an email to settings area. You wanna integrate with MailChimp, do that. You wanna redirect after sending, choose that here. You want a webhook, which is information that's sent with a link. You can actually send that to something like Zapier and you can automate all kinds of different things. You can connect to Drip, Active Campaign, and Get Response. And these are expanding. When, when Elementor first started, I believe it was just email one, email two, and MailChimp, I believe. So they've added a whole bunch as time has gone on. Under the emails, the first one is the one that's sent to you. And by default, it pulls in the email from the website, email address from the website, new message from website name. This short code pulls in all the fields, so you can keep that as it is. You can change the from email if you want to. It doesn't have to be a real email. It's just coming from the website. You don't actually reply to this email. The reply to is the one you want to change. So you want to make that equal to a field. And you want that field to be the email address. So it selects that automatically. So the reply to is going to be the email that the person entered. You can also carbon copy it to somebody else. So if you wanted to have this go to your assistant or to your branch manager or the client or whoever, you can carbon copy it and blind carbon copy it. And then metadata associated with the email or also included in the email, aside from information that they entered, you can have the date, time, the page URL. If you have multiple forms on your site, that might be useful. The user agent being what device they're using when they fill out your form, their IP address, which you may not want to use if you are if you want to be GDPR compliant or you got to add that to your privacy policy, and credit. I'm not sure what credit means. I know it's not credit score. Send as HTML or plain text. Plain text usually gets through most spam filters pretty easily. HTML can sometimes have trouble, so keep that in mind. Email to is the email that goes to the person that filled out your form. So for the from email, you want to have it sent from you. So I'm going to add my email address here. And let's back up the to email, the to section. So this is who it's going to. If you go to form fields, go to the email, go to advanced, copy the short code from here, go to email to, paste the short code in here and that will paste the email into there. And for this one, I set this to reply to to field. The, the reply to takes the email from the field, or you can specifically add the from email address as that person. So if you add the short code here from the from, for the first email that's sent to you, it's gonna show as coming from that person. So you may wanna do that as well. This depends on how you wanna set it up, test these things. So obviously build the form and test it, and then tweak it to whatever is relevant for you or what's best for you. The from email for this one, this is the email going to the person. So you wanna change the subjects to something like, thank you for contacting us. Here is the information you sent, and it includes all the fields. And the from email, 
will be from you. This is the default pulled in from the website. From name, you don't want to put your name in here. Reply to, put your email in here. You can blind carbon copy or regular carbon copy this to other people as well. You can add metadata. This is that information that's not filled into the form. You may not want to add this stuff aside from date and time. You don't want to add user agent and IP and I don't even know what credit is. You may not want to add that. You can probably add page URL as well. That would be okay. Um, but you can decide to add those or not. And again, plain or HTML. Plain gets through spam filters better. So keep that in mind. Additional options. Actually, before I do additional options, let's check out really quickly redirect. If we want to redirect this thing, we just add a link in here. You can have a custom thank you page. You could have a go to, here's a discount coupon. Thanks for contacting us. Go to wherever you want. It doesn't have to be on your website either. Go to any URL that's active on the internet. If we do MailChimp, we have to add in our API key. You can have a custom API key. You can have the default API key. And under integration settings inside Elementor, you can actually set this so it pulls this in automatically, which is under Elementor and settings, I believe, integrations. So whatever you set in here can be used for various things inside the builder. So the MailChimp API key, you can set it in here and it'll be pulled in under default. Then you just have to pick which list inside MailChimp this person is going to be added to. That list will be populated once your API key is validated and can pull that information from MailChimp. Or you can add a custom one-time entry of a custom API here, enter it here, it'll validate, and then it'll show you a, a drop down to pick a list to, to add that person to. And the other mail providers are quite a bit the same. Drip, Active Campaign, Get Response, they function similarly. The webhook is, like I said, a URL where you send things. So if you were going to integrate this with Zapier, you would use the webhook function inside Zapier. They give you a URL to add to your site. That URL you put in here, here even as Zapier as an example, you add that webhook that Zapier gives you. You can include advanced data. I always add all the data I can. And then have that sent to Zapier. And then Zapier will give you an output of all the data that was sent. And then you can use that in whatever way is appropriate to automate your business. So the webhook is very, very handy. Additional options. Form field ID. This is the ID of the actual form. It's not super important, but you, you can use this for CSS if you enter an ID here. But most people don't really do a lot of that because Elementor allows you to do CSS for pretty much anything on here. Custom messages. You can have a form was sent successfully. This would show up if you don't redirect or it might show up for a few seconds and then redirect you. An error message, an error has occurred field is required. There's something wrong. The form is invalid. So those are the custom error messages you can change. And then once we've done all that and you have a form here, you go to style and you can style all these things, believe it or not. You can add gaps, column gaps if you have columns, row gaps between rows to give more space or less space. Let's add a little column gapping there. Labels, if you have those, you can add spacing to the labels. Change the colors of the labels. The mark color is the color of the asterisk, which is by default, it's red. Change the color there. The fields themselves, you can give the text a color. So if you wanted the text in here to be green, you change it to green or whatever color you want. I'm gonna make mine gray. Change the typography, same settings as all the others. Change the background color. This doesn't show up very commonly. Background color changes, or at least they're not that extreme. You might see a, a light gray background color for form fields. But I've seen sites where the background color is like black or purple, and it's just, uh, ugh, what are you doing? But some people like that, and maybe that fits in with their brand, but I don't think it, it works well, to be honest. Um, the border color, which is the color around the outside of the form, you can change that to any color you wish or no color at all. I like to have a light gray around there. Change the border width. You can change them all at the same time. So I have it all be 10 pixels or you can change them independently. 
You can get really funky with this stuff. Have that one be five, this one be one, that one be two. So you can have really funky borders if you want. I'm gonna change mine to one. Border radius, it has a default radius as you can see here. You can see a little bit of rounding. If we put this to zero, we have perfectly square edges. If we have this at 10, we have rounded edges. Change this to a percentage. And I put this up to 25. We'll have lots of rounding. 50, we can have oval shaped form fields. I've never seen that before. I don't recommend you do it, but it is possible. It is possible to do it. Just don't. I'm gonna keep mine as the default for the border radius. The button color, I'm gonna change. The background color is a little too intense with that, uh, that blue right there. I'm just gonna make it this green. When we hover, it goes to blue, not anymore. Let's change the hover color. Let's make it a light blue. That's pretty good. You can change the text color as well. So if, uh, for this one, when I hover over it, the white is a little, uh, or not contrasting enough for my liking. So now we change the background or the text color for when you hover. So it goes to gray. It's pretty nice. Change the typography, border type. We haven't seen this option a lot, but you can change border type. So for example, if we just keep the border as solid, give it a width of with a 10 so we can see it. Give it a color so we can see it. So now we have a 10 pixel gray border. If I change this to double, that's what it looks like. This different border styles, dotted, dashed, groove. Groove is um, interesting. If you look in some of the corners, you'll see the groove effect where it might look like it's just two different colors, one inside, one outside. That's only true for the top and the left. The bottom and the right, they reverse. Anyway, groove is not used very often. I'm gonna keep mine at none for the border type. The messages, the typography, these are the messages that appear on the screen. So you can change the typography here. We don't see them right now. We have to actually submit the form to have them appear. For the success message, I don't know what the default colors are, but I'm gonna go with green for the success message. I'm gonna change my error message to red. And inline message color also to red because you likely want to see or want the visitor to see the inline message when they're filling out your form. Under advanced, we have all the same advanced options as the others. Most commonly you'd use margin and padding or Z index if you wanna have this pop up behind something or in front of something. And that's all there is for the form editor. Make sure you do a lot of testing. Make sure you test that you're getting the emails and that they're appearing as you want them to. But now we have a good looking form on our site right here. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And also consider buying Elementor through the affiliate link down below. It doesn't cost you any more to purchase it that way, but Elementor does send me a few dollars commission, which helps me keep these glorious lights on. And if you do purchase through there, thank you very much. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.